In this video, Nathan Brio gives me five things every new producer needs to know. Let's jump in. Hey, it's Graham Farah from Data Transmission, and if this is your first time joining us on this YouTube channel, we have tips and advice to help you, the DJ producer, get further in the music industry. Our big question series is simply that, a one question series uh, where we've had some of the biggest artists and producers in the world. People like Andy C, Camel Fat, Oliver Huntsman, Roger Sanchez, Kenny Dope, um, and many more. We asked them one question to get their experience and their knowledge for you, the aspiring artist. Today I'm joined by Nathan Barato. He's the Canadian DJ producer. He runs the amazing label Raw Authentic, which I'm a really, really big fan of. And I've asked him for five things every new producer needs to know. So let's check it out. Let's see what he says. I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, what up? This is Nathan Barato. Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, so five things producers should know. Um, one of my most important thoughts with that is trust yourself. Trust your ear, trust your experience, trust everything about yourself, I think. Um, you know, you, you should be able to make music that you can enjoy and you believe in. So when it gets to the point where you make a track that you think is good enough to play in a club, play in a set, something like that, um, you know, no matter what other indicators are out there that are telling you that your track sucks, if you believe in it, if you like it, someone else is going to feel the same. So trust yourself, right? My second tip for um, what a producer should know is learn your DAW. Whatever DAW you're using, um, you know, pretty much as far as I know, all of them can really do anything that you need to make a great sounding track or music. Um, you can really get wrapped up in this world of internet and information and sales and YouTube and you know, you want to just watch a tutorial and you're getting blasted with sales uh, for this product or that product, but maybe you don't have the money for it. Maybe you don't feel like you're not going to make good music until you get that piece. That's not true. You can do it in your DAW. Go deep into your DAW. Learn anything you can about your DAW. You can do so much with it. Um, spend a lot of time on it and uh, I think you might be surprised what you find. Good. My third tip for you is remove distractions from the studio. I know it's hard to do and we're all glued to our phones. Uh, we use our phones in many ways um, that aren't even distractions. They're helpful, I understand. But when you're trying to create, sometimes something hits you, you know, uh, often something hits you and it's really easy to just grab the phone naturally um, and you lose that thing that you had going. and. You know, sometimes you want to even record yourself. I understand all that, but when you're in a creative state, you want that thing away from you. Sometimes I've gotten to the point where I'll leave the phone out of the room entirely, um, or I'll keep it kind of out of arm's length. Uh, that's that works well. And sometimes I'll just set a timer. Let's say I really want to like I want to I want to go hard for two hours, five hours, whatever the number is that fits in your day. Set a timer on your phone. Put the phone away. And just work until that thing goes off and just work until that thing goes off just keep at it my fourth tip would be i think people should learn piano or some instrument uh, develop some kind of musical intuition if you don't think you have enough of it uh, i've been very lucky uh, i was really young my father uh, put me into guitar lessons at a young age i hated it uh, it was classical guitar i did not resonate with the music i was learning at all it was like going to math class every week. But I think it did have an impact on my intuition for what, you know, maybe might sound good or what is wrong or just basics. I don't even remember a thing about playing classical guitar, but there was something kind of that helped me along the way where a lot of my first gigs as a high school you know, dance um, DJ, I think I was, I was in tune to a lot of things that I wouldn't have been. If I didn't have those lessons and I think well I think piano is something that anyone can use in any kind of genre of music just even as a basic you know understanding of music and flow and it'll just kind of speed the process up for you and you know what it's a lot of fun I've started to learn piano myself I've been making tracks for years just on you know what feels good what feels this what feels that um, 
and it works but i think since actually learning piano recently i'm getting way faster and way better melodies bass lines grooves um you know even when i'm using just drum sounds everything just sounds i think way tighter my fifth tip for producers um reference the work you're doing against other tracks that you think sound great um uh, you know they're great on whatever levels that you consider to be great on maybe it's sonically really good maybe it's arranged well maybe the bass line is really wide and fat who knows what it is but you know try to play your tracks against these tracks and maybe you're not even a dj or don't have a way to dj at home you know we're all stuck in isolation right now um there are plenty of free apps that you can get to a and b your tracks or you can do it in your daw but you know if you could kind of even dj with them especially if you're making music that is for a dj to play in a club at a party something like that or a label that uh, releases music and djs are their market you know i would really try to dj that music against music that you think sounds good um you'll learn a lot and you'll maybe get frustrated because you think your tracks sound like shit compared to these other tracks also keep in mind you know when you're when you're comparing your track to a you know purchased track it's professionally mixed professionally mastered uh there are a lot of levels to get it to the point where you're buying it but it's still a good practice and it's only going to make you stronger and better and just keep trying because you know one day you're going to be like yo my track sounds sick well those tips great did you enjoy them which was your favorite uh, which one do you got the most out of? Comment in the comment below. If this is your first time joining us on YouTube, please subscribe. I know that I see in the stats that a load of people are kind of watching and not subscribing. By subscribing, you kind of get all the, the videos first. You get all the new live things. We go live every morning at the moment in lockdown with our Boost Breakfast. This is a kind of tip series we have every morning. So come and join us at 7.30 in the morning. You can also re-watch these on the channel. Um, I'd love for you to subscribe, join, join the community. It helps me grow the channel and gets me bigger guests as well, which is really good. So it gets you more knowledge. Uh, give this a like, give it a comment. That also helps the reach of this um, and helps others find it quicker. Thanks for joining me today. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.